So this question says x plus 1, and again, I like to rewrite any time the question provides an equation. So x plus 1 equals 2 divided by x plus 1. In the equation above, which of the following is a possible value of x plus 1? So this is very important. Is a possible value of x plus 1? So there's two ways to think about this. Really, really there's, there's really one best way to think about this. x plus 1 is equal to one of these options. Okay, so now if that's true, that means I can use a strategy called plug in answers or PIA. Now, how do I use plug in answers? So let's try it out. Again, since this is the most important thing to think about here, if I were to try out answer choice A, I would be able to replace x plus 1 with 1 minus square root 2, right? If in fact, 1 minus root 2, which is answer choice A, is a possible value of x plus 1. That means that I should be able to replace x plus 1 with 1 minus root 2. And I should be able to replace x plus 1 over here also with 1 minus square root 2. And this should give me a true statement, right? So if I do the math here, if I multiply both sides by 1 minus square root 2 in order to get to remove the uh, 1 minus square root 2, in order to remove this denominator here, the question is, is it true that 1 minus root 2 times 1 minus root 2 on the left is equal to positive 2? If we do the math there, you will see that that is not true. So A is gone. Now, how about choice B, right? Because we're just plugging in answers. Choice B, again, says, hey, x plus 1, a possible value of x plus 1 is square root of 2. So let's try it out. So, so that means square root 2 would equal 2 divided by root 2. So again, let's do the math. If I multiply by root 2 on both sides, the root 2's cancel out here. Square root 2 times square root 2 is equal to square root 4, technically. And then square root 4 is equal to 2. So in fact, I do get a true statement. I get the left-hand side equaling 2 and the right-hand side equaling 2. So therefore, choice B is the correct answer. Now, if you don't like that method, um, and if you've never done that method, is probably why you don't like it because it's a great method to use on questions on this test. However, it's not necessary for this particular question. We can go a much more traditional route to answering this question and just say, you know what? I'm gonna treat this like another strategy that I use and that I love to use on this test, which is the simplify strategy. Again, simplify questions typically are very short, like what we have here, right? Only a line and a half and they typically have an equation or expression provided. So how do I simplify the equation that's been provided to me? Again, if I want to solve for x plus one, I will need to isolate x plus one. So the best thing for me to do is to multiply both sides by x plus one. So that my x plus ones cross out here, and then I'm left with this x plus one times x plus one, which again is going to be x plus one squared is the best way to think of that versus foiling it out into a trinomial again because the whole point of what i'm doing here is i want to isolate x plus one right so i don't want to expand i don't want to expand that i want to keep it as x plus one so then next because i want x plus one not x plus one squared i can square root both sides in square rooting both sides my squared is gone the root is gone this leaves me with just x plus one and this equals the square root of 2. So this is telling me that a solution to x plus 1 is root 2, which again just points right back to choice B as the correct answer.